pay more for our pensions, work longer and get less. We're looking at paying an extra £100 a month in contributions, we're having to work till we're 68, and teachers stand to lose over the course of their retirement in the figures of like 100, £120,000. Maybe I would have got about £10,000 a year in pension. It looks like it's going to be more like four. If they can bail out the banks, okay, if they can pay something like 1.2 trillion a okay, year, why can't they save the pension? If the bank signed a contract, can they rip the contract? No, they can't. But they can rip our contract, they can go to the parliament, rip it up, do another contract. Is that fair? Is that fair on our taxpayers' money? No, it's not. It's totally unfair. The more I talk, the more I get upset because they know what they're doing is they can get away with it. Most people don't have luxuries, you know, they just about get by. That's the thing. I live in one room. It's a one room flat that I rent, and that's all I can afford on my teacher's salary. We've got lots of people who earn less than £18,000 a year and live and work in central London. Public sector is the last area where people are getting anything approaching a decent pension. Everyone ought to be brought up to that level. Don't bring everyone down to the worst level. Some people do say, you know, ah, oh, but it's worse elsewhere. But the point is that it's not as bad as other places here because we've got the unions and we have to fight to defend the unions, first and foremost, and secondly, to defend what we've gained so far. This is not just about pensions. I think that pensions is the catalyst for a lot for the action that we're taking today. But people are really, really angry. People want to do something. It's about education cuts in general. It's about public sector cuts in general. We're facing a, an ideologically driven right-wing attack on the public sector, on all of us, so that's what it's about really. We have a two-year two pay freeze and on top of that they want us to pay more for our pensions. Uh, we're losing staff because we've had a recruitment freeze for probably three or four years now. So staff leaves are not getting replaced, so the workload's going on. School teachers have been given a pay freeze for the next two years, proposed pay freeze. We were given 0.75%. Quite a lot of us have not had um, a pay rise now for, for five years, uh, with inflation running at just over 5%, that's tantamount to a pay cut. The Department for Work and Pensions recently announced the closure of 22 benefit centres. With the Academy's model, there's an attempt to worsen our working conditions, make us work longer, work Saturdays, cut holidays, which means you can't work as intensely and closely with the students. I'm an ESOL teacher and um, the government is no longer um, allowing free access to um, very, very basic English language classes, which is what people need in order to progress into uh, vocational courses. This college has been shrinking as long as I've been here, which is the last of 10 years. Every year, people have been made redundant and courses are being closed, and the options are getting fewer and fewer and less and less. I mean, last year, 70% of our plumbing department was cut. In May, they announced they wanted to cut 10% of college staff, about 25% of teaching staff, uh, we had a really big battle. We balloted for strike action, got an 80% vote. Um, in the end, they backed off from compulsory redundancies. They got two thirds of what they wanted through voluntary, but we saved about a third uh, when they did a U-turn on compulsory redundancies. So it was a victory. And uh, what we've done through that process is strengthened the union. We made people realize that actually it makes a difference fighting and we've just got to get ourselves geared up for next year because they'll come back for more. All these changes are imposed, along with the cuts to the money that the government gives to these organisations, we've got to find another £8.25 million in the next four years simply to stand still. And we've got to get that from outside. And the feeling here is that um, the cuts and the attacks on our pension, they're a political and ideological attack, and they're using the economic argument to disguise that. Um, this country isn't bankrupt. You know, we can function with a deficit. We have done in the past. There's 120 billion pounds worth of unpaid tax. It's not collected. So there is an alternative. Collect that tax, grow your way out of a recession by investing in education, by investing in jobs. I feel, and a lot of people feel at this branch, that the real reason why they're cutting pensions and cutting public services is in order to facilitate privatization. The white paper that just came out yesterday the plans for the government's amazing plans for um, FE and HE. It's very depressing, it's privatisation in 
introduce a marketisation to um, education. I'm not sure how you feel. Uh, I get it. So you feel one We're going to go to um, Haggerston School now, oh, so this is the last chance for Keck. Yeah. We are doing a tour of the picket lines in Hackney in solidarity with the workers who are on strike and we're bringing them breakfast. So we've got cereal, we've got bagels, we've got cakes. Thank you. Awesome. Bacon all night. I've never been out on strike Morning. and I've actually been Morning. brought breakfast before. Morning. It's just a fantastic day. It, you know, it's sunny um, and everyone's in really, really good spirits. <laughs> with people who are not unionized, who are freelancers in the cultural sector. So today we're going to walk around to all the cafes where freelancers hang out and encourage them to walk out even though they don't have regular workplaces or regular contracts. What was nice this morning was there was two uh, young girls that just basically came to the picket um, and they live here locally and they, they just were trying to sort of find a way to basically place, place their bodies or, you know, find a you know, a sense of which they can actually, but you know, they're not unionized. There are unions that are trying to expand and, and deal with the kind of complexities of freelance work, but I think um, there's a step before that because a lot of freelance workers sometimes, and especially in culture, don't even think of themselves as workers, and that's sort of the step we're working on. people just you know coming by and showing signs of support leaving their horns etc etc like you know that you've got now and um, so I think on the whole there is much 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 more support in the wider public for um, strikes demonstrations and uh, reclaiming our right to decent pay and decent living conditions I've been a teacher for about 35 years I've never been on strike and I never considered going on strike. It's against every part of my body not to do so. However, I feel that the way that we have been treated has been shocking to reduce our wages by increasing pension contributions, to have such a bad effect on the future education of our children by making sure that they don't get good teachers is terrible. I think we've been really treated very badly and for someone like myself who's very moderate to feel that shows how strongly teachers feel about it. We need to escalate because they're planning an unprecedented series of attacks against us. We need to be equally unprecedented and militant in our response to that. Every indication is that all the, all the civil service unions will probably be out in October. So hopefully that's where we'll go from there and take it from there. What we'd like to see is a rolling campaign of more public sector strikes, but this time right across the board and bring out every single public sector worker and really put the government under pressure. No doubt about it, we need a general strike. I mean, what we're seeing today is the biggest coordinated strike action since the 1920s. But, you know, so far this is only four unions. What we need is all of the unions coming out in a general strike and not just the unions, actually everybody, non-unionised workers as well.